Okay, in this um, segment, we're going to look at the common mistakes with designing the balance scorecard. Now, what I've noticed over and over again is even when I go over these common mistakes, I still see them over and over again. So you might want to listen to this one again after you've listened to it the first time, after you get working on your project, because <clears throat> it, it really does, these are a lot of the things that I've seen people do over and over again. And that's really how I came up with this. Okay, the first one on here says that the balance scorecard is a personal, personal scorecard. It's not for your supervisor. It's not for your organization that's whole. It's to be related to your job. And yes, there is a way to relate it to your job. You just have to think about it and work on it. The second thing here is that measures need to be quantifiable. Whatever you've picked for your measure, you have to be able to, to figure out how to make that a quantifiable uh, measure. Note, if you remember back to the Jane Doe example with the East Central um, Hospital, uh, her target for learning and growth was a completion date. So it can be a completion date when she, and the completion of it. Uh, but um, it needs to be something that can be quantified. It doesn't have to be dollars and cents. Okay, the objectives needs to match the target. In other words, whatever your goal is, it better match your whatever you're trying to measure. You need to get all these things lined up. And um, the target is nothing more than quantifying whatever you've put down for your measure. So, for example, for Jane Doe, her... Um, Her measure was uh, the completion date, and her target was a very specific date. But these all, they all need to be interrelated. Again, the target needs to be specific. Don't tell me you're gonna reduce costs. You have to put a percentage in there, or a dollar amount, or something. You need to, you know, you need to make the target specific. How are you gonna know when you've reached that target if it's not uh, specific? And then the next one down here says the financial perspective needs a financial measure. A lot of times I find that people put something in there, the financial, and it may be a great measure, but it's not measuring the financial perspective. And if, it's, and if it is a really good measure, if it is, there may be somewhere else it can go on your scorecard. But when you're doing the financial, when I say a financial measure, I mean it needs to be dollars and cents, or it could also be a percentage, a percentage we're going to reduce costs by a certain percentage, or we're going to increase revenues by a certain percentage. Okay, going on. More common mistakes continued. The target should quantify the measure. I can't emphasize that enough. The target and your measure have to be right. They might be real similar. Um, for Jane, it was, uh, I'm going to complete the training and then the target was the date she was going to complete it. Doesn't have to be difficult, keep it simple. Often I find that measures are misclassified, and if that is the case, I may ask, I may say, you know, that's a great measure, but that's really a customer measure, or that's really an internal business process. And sometimes those are very interrelated, because the truth is, is if we don't have good, if you don't have good internal business processes going on, your customers are not gonna be happy, they're, you're not going to be satisfying them, they're not going to be getting the information they need, or you're not going to have on-time deliveries, or, or whatever it is you're doing. So the internal business processes have to be right for customers to be happy. And that's certainly a good example of how things are interrelated. Internal business processes aren't right, customers aren't happy. When customers aren't happy, the business is going to suffer, you're going to lose business in the long term. And, you, and there you have your financial measure, which is lagging. Okay, sometimes measures can be classified in more, one, more than one perspective. Sometimes you may argue with me, you know, this could really be this measure. And um, so you, there, I think there's some degree, there can be some degree of latitude between customer and internal business process. And then um, number nine here says, don't make uh, high goals or aggressive goals without giving me some of the how-tos. And for um, Jane Doe, she just didn't state that she wanted to reduce training costs by uh, 
she gave me the reason how they were going to do that. They were going to use e-learning modules and they were going to reduce training costs by reducing those travel costs also that were related to training. So tell me how you're going to do it. Don't just say, oh, we're going to increase revenues 20%. And how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to measure that on the financial statements. Well, what are you going to do? So just give a little bit of the how-tos of what you're going to do to make, to make that change. <clears throat> or what your plan is. And then um, number 10 says the perspective may need more than one measure. And that was certainly true with Jane Doe's scorecard. When she first gave me her rough draft of her scorecard, there were two measures on there that she had where she had really grouped things together. And the first was the training that I went through. We had to, I really felt it was important for her to separate the training for the new employees from the training for the veteran employees. And I think there was a couple of her customer measures. She kind of grouped them together. Don't be afraid to separate. I know the project says you just need to have one, but if, if it makes sense to separate them, sometimes it's not that hard. It, yeah, it requires a little more ink and paper, but if it's going to make this project more meaningful, and if you're like Jane and you wanted it to be something you could actually implement, and by the way, I have seen Jane since she did this project, which was only about six months ago, and she told me, this was last month, she said, you know what, we've been able to implement a lot of those things, and this was really a useful project, uh, and it was just spot on with what I was doing at work. And she actually did her project early because she said it was so helpful. Um, she was really um, delighted with the results. Uh, and I'm happy I'm gonna see her in graduation next month. Uh, she's gonna be graduating from our program. And uh, one of the things also that I noticed, and this is with, um, that don't use the textbook as one of your references. You don't need to just load up your paper with lots and lots of references. You know, you've, you've got the project directions out there. It's not necessary to use the textbook as a reference. Um, and if you have any more questions um, about designing your scorecard, um, feel, feel free to um, contact your professor um, if you're struggling with how to get started. Um, even just turning in a draft and getting feedback uh, should prove to be very helpful. But might not hurt to review some of these common mistakes again because I continue to see them over and over again in almost every class. And that's all for this section. Look forward to seeing your projects.